It's Food Plot Friday. And we're gonna be dropping in real world wildlife products, Gen 2 soybeans. Let's jump into the field. Well, that was a quick trip from the bench. Here we are standing in one of my soybean plots. And this plot is gonna be planted with the real world wildlife products Gen 2 soybeans. And what we'll do is we'll take a quick overview and look at the plot. And as you can see, I generally don't like to design plots that are just a standard square, circle, oval. I like to give it a little bit of contour, some different lines, and I also back up all of my food plots with other food plots. This really gives it a layered effect. I have multiple products for multiple times of year to provide the deer with all the nutrition that they need. Plus, if the deer move off of one type of product to another, I still have a tree stand that's located close by and I could take advantage of the seasonal shift. The first step you can see, I have my three point spreader hooked up to my John Deere 4105. And as I've always said with any food plot planting program, it is vital that you take a soil sample so you know the recommendations of what type of fertilizer and how much of fertilizer to mix or the ratios that you need to put down to get the best results for that product. Whether it's clover, soybeans, corn, it doesn't matter. Get yourself a soil sample. And for our soybean plot, the fertilization recommendation came back with a specific amount of phosphorus and potash to be applied. We're gonna put down the proper amount of fertilizer to give this soybean plot the maximum growth potential. Let's get to work. Here's a fertilizer that I weighed up back at the farm. I have it in specific amounts for this Gen 2 soybean plot. Right here we have our phosphorus and right here we have our potash. We're gonna get this in the spreader. Plots tilled, time to plant. All right, our food plot is fertilized. We tilled it up and now it's time to plant our real world wildlife products, Gen 2 soybeans in the field behind us. Today, we're gonna be planting them with an old cut down refurbished John Deere Van Brunt grain drill. I really find that it's best to use a piece of planting equipment or machinery that allows your seeds to get spaced appropriately and at the appropriate depth to achieve maximum productivity. Today, we're gonna to be shooting for around an inch of planting depth in the soil. You could really push it to an inch and a half, but in my opinion, I believe you're getting too deep into the soil. And a couple of things will happen if your seed is too deep. One, should the soil crust over, your new seedling's gonna have a very hard time pushing all the way up through an inch and a half of dirt plus the crusted over dirt. That neck is very weak and tender and if it gets broken or it gets bent over before it reaches the surface, your seed's really gonna be no good. If your seed is also planted too shallow, you also run the risk of your seed not having enough seed to soil contact. You also run the risk of animals coming by and cherry picking them out of your field and you also run the risk of that taproot not being able to bury itself down far enough to establish the plant and thus you're in the same problem where when it starts to neck up out of the dirt there's not enough dirt to support the plant 
your plant's gonna fall over and your seed's gonna be no good. Another thing we really wanna look at is your soil temperature. You don't wanna plant too early in the season for a couple of reasons. Number one, if your soil temperature is well below 60 degrees, you're gonna have a very hard time getting your seed to germinate. It will germinate, but it'll be very, very slow. And really anything after 30 days, you run the risk of it being susceptible to disease. You also run the risk of your seed rotting in the ground if there was a lot of rain and not enough warm soil temperature to get that seed to pop and start growing. So really you wanna have a good average 60 degree soil temperature we're talking about. And if you're still unsure if it's time to plant, Really, you can run down to your local Casey's or gas station in the morning, grab a donut. I assure you, there will be a bunch of farmers down there. You can ask those guys. They do it for a living. They depend on the soil temperatures. They know when to plant corn, soybeans, you know, and the big cash crops. Ask one of those guys, or when you're just driving around, check out the fields. But in general, and in my opinion, depending on where you are within the Midwest, you know, around that second week of May, you're gonna really wanna start looking at getting your soybeans into the ground. Let's fill up our grain drill and get planting. Just that fast. With a good tractor, a good piece of planting equipment such as that John Deere Van Brunt grain drill, our real world wildlife products Gen 2 soybeans are planted and in the ground. Now the next thing we got to figure out and learn how to do, a rain dance. We'll be bringing you updates this summer as our soybeans grow and we'll show you the progress. Till next time, this has been Food Plot Friday. Oh. And don't forget to like us on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, and follow us on the rest of all the social media outlets. There's more great content just like this over on OneArrowOutdoors.com. All right, until next time, I'm out of here.